Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're building a deck around Minion of the Mighty, the 1 mana 01 Cobalt from Forgotten Realms. It has Menace and Pack Tactics, says whenever the Minion of the Mighty attacks, if you attacked with creatures with total power 6 or greater this combat, you may put a Dragon creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. So first off, let me say Minion of the Mighty is not a good magic card. I don't think this deck is going to be incredibly competitive, but either way, we try to build a deck around it. So how do we approach this? Of course, we're going to need some dragons first, so let's meet all the dragons in the deck. At 5 mana, we've got the full playset of Goldspan Dragon, 4-4 four, four with Flying and Haste, and whenever a Goldspan attacks or becomes the target of a spell, we get to make a treasure token, and we can sacrifice the treasure for double the amount of mana as long as we have a Goldspan in play. Then at 6 mana we've got 3 copies of Inferno of the Star Mounts, a 6-6 six, six legendary dragon with flying and haste cannot be countered, also has fire breathing so we can spend the red mana to give it one additional power until end of turn, and if we can get its power up to 20 we get to deal 20 damage to any target, and one way to potentially get to that 20 power threshold is using Old Nawbone, the 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven legendary dragon with flying, saying whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player we get to create that many treasure tokens. So we get to make a ton of treasure with Old Nawbone, especially if we also have gold span in play we can maybe get to enough mana to pump up our inferno up to 20 power although in those circumstances we're probably winning the game already so these are the dragons that we're trying to cheat into play with our minion of the mighty and how are we going to get to six or more power to trigger pack tactics well that's where all these landfall creatures come in handy at one mana we've got the full playset of Akum Hellhound, an O1 that gets plus two plus two until end of turn whenever land enters the battlefield under our control. Then at two mana we've got the full playset of Brushfire Elemental, a 1-1 one -one elemental with haste cannot be blocked by creatures with power two or less, and landfall also gives it plus two plus two until end of turn. And then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Skyclave Geopede, 3 mana 3-1 three with Trample, and Landfall also gives it plus 2 plus 2. The reason we're not playing with the Mammoth at 3 mana is that it's double green, and the mana base is slightly skewed towards red, so getting that double green on turn 3 is going to be pretty tough, so we're going with the Geopede instead. So these are the 12 Landfall creatures that synergize quite nicely with cards like Roiling Regrowth and Vastwood Surge since they represent two landfall triggers for various landfall creatures, so if we play land and cast fast with surge or roiling regrowth, we can potentially be looking at three landfall triggers in the same turn, pumping our creatures by six, which is enough of course to trigger the minion of the mighty's pack tactics, and then roiling regrowth makes us sack a land to find two basic lands to put on the battlefield, so ramps us by one, and then Vastwood Surge essentially ramps us by two for four mana, and we can also kick it for four additional mana, in which case we can put two plus one plus one counters on each creature we control, so that's potentially a nice mana sink with the extra mana that Goldspan and Old Knobbone provide, besides potentially pumping up an Inferno of the Star Mounts. So that's our strategy, and the cool thing about playing these landfall creatures and ramp spells is that if we don't draw Minion of the Mighty, we're still potentially ramping into our dragons with Regrowth and Vastwood Surge, so we can just hard cast them. So there is a backup plan in case we don't draw Minion of the Mighty. And then rounding out the deck at 2 mana, only 2 copies of Dragon's Fire. I wish we could play more since it is a very powerful card in this deck where we have so many high powered dragons we can reveal, but this is kind of a combo deck and in combo decks you can't afford to play too many interactive spells since you need a high density of combo pieces, in this case we need both our minion, or landfall creature and our ramp spell to enable landfall twice, so there's just not a lot of room for interactive cards like Dragon's Fire. Then we also have two copies of Shatter Skull Smashing, which we can play as a land or a removal spell, so the flexibility is quite nice. Then we've got a ram spells or dragons, and then going over the mana base we've got some creature lands with the Den of the Bugbear, can also potentially help enable pack tactics, as well as a Lair of the Hydra, which is another great mana sink if we manage to make a lot of mana with our various treasure making dragons. 
And then we've got some basic lands to search up with Vasut Search and Roiling Regrowth, six mountains, six forests. Could also turn those into snow-covered basics, but there's no main deck reason to include them. And then we've got two copies of Temple of the Dragon Queen as another potential dual land that enters the battlefield untapped if we control a dragon or can reveal a dragon from our hand. So just provides a nice bit of mana fixing. Could also consider playing Evolving Wilds as another a land that can potentially enable landfall twice for us by fetching up a second land, although that will always come into play tapped, and we do still want to be able to curve out smoothly, which is why we're going with two copies of Temple as our dual land instead. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Don't have a minion of the mighty, but it looks like a keepable hand otherwise. Turn 1 Hellhound, turn 2 we can potentially Dragon's Fire something, turn 3 Geopede. And a Roiling Regrowth is an excellent pickup, as that will potentially allow us to ramp into Dragon while providing a Landfall twice. No target for Dragon's Fire, unfortunately. So we'll hit for two, play Geopede. Field trip, their opponent's a blue-green ramp deck. Well, they're gonna take a lot of damage off our landfall creatures here. Just gonna Vastwood Surge, and they might already be dead. Not quite, opponent falls to one, but a hasty Goldspan Dragon can surely end the game for us. Science is up to three. And uh, an uncounterable Inferno should seal the deal here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's not gonna cut it. Okay, this has potential. Although sadly I have to put one card on the bottom. I have 10 dragon payoffs. If we put this on the bottom, there's 9 left in the deck. 7 remaining ramp spells. 11 remaining landfall creatures. And of course only 3 minions. I think I need to keep all my lands. So the card I'm most likely to replace is the Hellhound with another landfall creature. And then we'll keep the dream alive of uh, enabling the minion. There's Geopede, okay. So now I just need a fourth land. And then we can live the dream of a turn four Nobone. Attack for zero to send a message. Put in black green. Alright, let's hope the Geopede survives. Just need one turn with the Geopede in play. It's gonna be a deadly dispute sacking the Eye Twitch to learn a lesson. Gets Necrotic Fumes, so if they have a 1 or 2 drop they can exile. They can put that to use to exile my Geopede. Let's hope they don't. Binding destroys Geopede, that's unfortunate. Nope, goes for the Minion of the Mighty instead. That's showing a lot of respect. All right, let's just vast with surge and prepare to ramp into some dragons, I guess. Lair of the Hydra also great mana sink to have alongside Goldspan and Old Knobbone, although it didn't have a great window to play it untapped. Oh, opponent's at 11. We've got two dragons in hand, although they can answer one with Necrotic Fumes. Yeah, I guess people are just afraid of the minion, even though it's not always all that threatening. 
a slow save and can turn into a 4-3. Blood on the snow to wipe the board. Kills Geopede. Brings back Eye Twitch. Okay, well, time for Gold Span. They're probably just gonna take it in next turn. Nope, never mind. So they've got other plans for dealing with our dragon. And Lair of the Hydra here, pretty important too. Opponent gets Mascot Exhibition. Make some blockers. Well, if Mascot Exhibition is their play, I'm not too worried. Can play Nobo and Dragon Attacks, they can chump it with Inkling, or they can give us a ton of treasure. Aha, uh -huh, Vorinclex. Okay, doesn't block Goldspan Dragon, so take six. And we're about to make a lot of treasure here. Oof, double gold span. Do we have mana for both? Didn't think so. Let's go with Nobo and then. And then second main phase, I could still play another gold span, although that's probably overextending into a blood on the snow. We'll keep all that mana for Lair of the Hydra. Nobone also blocks for Inklex nicely. With uh, six treasures and gold span in play, that's 12 mana. So, yeah, this would be capable of potentially dealing 20 damage with an Inferno of the Star Mounts. Oh no, calling Ritual? Alright, guess I'm sacking my treasure so the opponent doesn't get mana from it. So it's not gonna accomplish much other than just removing our treasures. Necrotic Fumes, Snow Bone, so that leaves him dead to double goal span. Or even a Lair of the Hydra would be enough here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand is. Not great. We've got a regrowth which doesn't even ramp into an inferno on the following turn. Missing a landfall creature and our minion of the mighty, so I think this is a mulligan. Okay, this hand has potential. Probably bottom inferno and then keep double hellhounds, which we can play on turn one thanks to goldspan that we get to reveal. And then Hellhound, pretty good with Roiling Regrowth as well. So just a red-green aggro hand. Put on red-white. And I've got the Frostbite, unfortunately. That's gonna slow us down. Got the land for regrowth at least. If they've got another frostbite, we can punish them. Hit them for six. And we're just an untapped land away from a gold span attacking. And then I can even cast my Dragon's Fire before blockers using the treasure. Alright. Opponent takes six. Yeah, for a mulligan to six where our opponent had double frostbites. 
we can't complain. Hopefully the gold span remains unanswered. Rip apart leaves behind a treasure, so they've got another burn spell here. Dragon's fire. All right, well, we've got a bunch of treasure now, so we could top deck another big creature for the win. Just gonna be land for hellhounds. Yeah, we'll get in for two. There's part of me that wants to keep the land in case we draw more landfall creatures off the top. So now an Inferno of the Star Mounds would be our best draw. Another gold span would be great. Minion of the Mighty, not so much. Can even kick Vastwood Surge, which would be quite strong. All right, there's our Minion of the Mighty. A nice zero one with Menace. So that's the drawback of including Minion in our deck. Sadly, no creature lands to keep up the pressure with. On the bright side, our opponent's also not doing much. All right. There's the Wayward Bonder. It's gonna just stay put. And then I could deal one here. So next turn opponent could bring back Crafty Companion, that's fine. They're probably just gonna keep plussing. Let's see, if I put them to 5, then I could maybe kill them if we draw another Roiling Regrowth. Sure. Sparring Regimen can learn for removal for Elemental, maybe. Yep, start from scratch will do. Alright, so Vastwood Surge would probably be our best draw here, besides a Hasty Dragon. And there's Vastwood Surge with Kicker. Triggers Landfall twice, and that's a lethal attack. Minion of the Mighty. Managed to deal two damage. Pack tactics, not super relevant anymore at this stage in the game. Yeah, overall not a bad showing. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing green mana and maybe a couple lands, but yeah, this hand has potential. We've got minion and the landfall creatures. Opponent with an eye twitch and there's Lair of the Hydra, which we can play next turn. So, yeah, if we find a fourth land, we might be able to enable the minion. So, for now, I could play a land, play Brushfire Elemental, or I could get the minion in play. If I play Brushfire Elemental, then I wouldn't necessarily be able to uh, enable pack tactics next turn since we don't have a hasty minion. So then, what's the play? If I just play minion now and next turn go brush fire land, I'm still going to be one point of power short. So I think we just play the brush fire now. Attack. And then next turn maybe go minion plus dragon's fire. Or play Geopede, we'll see. Could have also been a game where playing minion turn one was the correct play. Shambling Ghasts. Could be annoying here, as that can threaten to take out one of our creatures if it gets sacrificed. We'll see which one they go for. Opponent passes, maybe a plum with a forbidden in hand to sack a bunch of creatures at once. Yep. So, probably takes out Brushfire Elemental here. So. 
So if I play minion, it's only going to be enabled if I top deck a Royal and Regrowth, because then next turn I could play a land, Regrowth, and essentially have six power on the Hellhounds. And we can put Inferno in play. Otherwise I might be better off just playing the GOP and then being patient on the minion. Although, of course, the longer we wait, the more likely we are to just hard cast the Inferno instead of needing to cheat it into play. So our opponent draws some cards. Yeah, if we draw Roiling Regrowth, then I'm probably just going to play minion and pass without playing land. If not, I think I'll go with the Geopede. And then I might wait to play my lands to enable tactics for the minion. Another brush fire. Well, that means we get to have our cake and eat it too. So now... I might still be one short of uh, enabling pack tactics next turn, even with a land. But a regrowth would still do it. Alright, so now I'm thinking play Geopedes, just hit for one and pass, and then next turn. The land will enable tactics for us. Skeletal Swarming resolves. Okay. Ooh, even get to put old Gnawbone in play here. Finally time to attack. And we're about to make a lot of treasure. Still have a Dragon's Fire available too. Ah, I guess we just kill the opponent instead here was looking forward to making a bunch of treasure and then maybe even uh, getting to 20 power on the Inferno of the Star Mounts. But yeah, I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's decent. Two landfall creatures into Roiling Regrowth to trigger landfall and ramp into Inferno. Facing an aggressive goblin stack. So we could be a little bit behind in the race. So Dragon's Fire is tempting, as much as I want to play Brush Fire and Smash, should probably hit the brakes and keep up Dragon's Fire. If they play a Lord, we can kill that, otherwise killing Captain's fine. Yeah, I think long term killing the Lord's probably better, although it's still a close call. No need to... Show them a dragon. Another dragon's fire. I think I still get the GOP down. Keep dragon's fire for future lord. That rebuke kills the GOP. Makes me regret playing it over using dragon's fire. So now I probably pass a turn, and then I have to decide between Regrowth and Dragon's Fire. Alright, Battle Cry Goblin. I'm gonna have to kill. They do get to pump the team, but at least they don't get to enable Pank Tactics here. For the uh, Battle Cry Goblin, that is. I'll land four. Have to play the Brushfire Elemental and keep it on defense. So not really where we want it to be. Missed a few too many land drops.
And a flame skull. Okay, that doesn't kill me yet. But a frostbite will. Alright. So despite drawing two of our dragon's fires, which are good in this type of matchup, the rest of our hands kind of lined up awkwardly, maybe killing the captain as opposed to playing the GOP would have worked out better, but probably would have ended up uh, losing in the end. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable-ish hand. If we draw a minion of the mighty, it's actually exciting. For now we're just beating down with brush fire elementals. Can probably afford to play one tapped. Brush fire beatdown. Next turn, play another one, play maybe even a tap land. Opponent's blue white. Jory uh, disruption is always kind of awkward with landfall creatures, but that's fine. And then I'm not gonna show them anything. Portable hole, exiles elemental, yeah, those are two good cheap answers. Can pay for disruption now at least. And Inferno is uncounterable. Wow, okay. Well, they've got all the removal here. Backup Inferno is not a bad deal. Sadly, don't have any creature lands to apply more pressure with. Opponent takes two. Possible they had another something on watch plus a card draw spell, but nope. Opponent just passes, foretells a card. And it's time for Inferno. Possible they have a Doomscar, but we've got another one to follow up. Divide by zero. Alright, that works. Doesn't actually counter the Inferno, just bounces it. They could have also let it resolve and then bounce it. So they know an Inferno is incoming. Let's see how they deal with it. Attack for eight. And an expel on Inferno. Wow. That's a very unexpected card. It's like the bigger version of you hear something on watch, but yeah, very effective against Inferno specifically. So now I'm not that confident about our chances anymore. Portable Hole the Hellhound. We've got another Inferno, hit them for six and maybe try and close out the game with Lair of the Hydra. Make sure to keep red mana untapped so I can still pump my Inferno for one. Oh, I guess uh, I mistapped. Although that was all green, so I wouldn't have been able to pump it more than this. Alright, points at five. Yeah, but they have to cast a Doomscar. We might be able to get them with Lair of the Hydra. But they might have a cheaper answer, who knows. Doomscar, two mana left. Can they answer the lair? Nope, they cannot. Alright, sweet. GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand could benefit from a minion of the mighty, but it's also fine without it. 
especially if the elemental survives. Aha, uh -huh, Ruin Crab. Could kill it right now, but I'm also kind of liking just playing the elemental. Opponent maybe a hideous laughter deck. It's got a frostbite for elemental. Yeah, regrowth sets up goldspan next turn, which is probably still worth it. And then we can kill the crab after dragon attacks. So goldspan will resolve. Still have a den of the bugbears, a nice creature land. So don't hate my spots. Minion of the Mighty a bit late to the party. Alright, they've got the Fumarole to answer Goldspan. And our opponent foretells a card. Times two. So time for Bugbear plus Minion. And then next turn maybe... Play Kick Fast with Surge. Yeah, now that Goldspan's gone. Could be in a bit of trouble. Beholds. Two to the bottom. And another Rune Crab. And a Cacophony mills for eight. Yeah, they milled some expensive cards, making a Hideous Laughter more effective, potentially. Opponents at 11. Could play Geopede. And that's basically my entire turn. Could activate Bugbear. Can't quite kick Vast with Surge. So I guess I don't hate GOP, then that's it. I'll attack first. But I might take the one from the Goblin. I've got 29 cards remaining. Yeah, hit this laughter times two. Could be enough for lethal, given how many expensive cards already got milled. So dual strike plus hideous laughter. And let's see for dead. Also possible we lose all our basics, so Vastwood Surge doesn't have anything to ramp into. Seven cards left. Okay, and a cacophony mills for eight. Yeah, that's game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Fine hand. Just gonna be down with Hakum Hellhound, and then yeah, we could benefit from drawing Minion of the Mighty potentially, assuming the Hellhounds survive. Play my Forest. That way, if we draw Brushfire Elemental. We get to play it and play land afterwards. Innkeeper. Next turn, Vast would Surge potentially sets up Nobone on the following turn. Alright, Yasharn. Can still sacrifice my land to a Roiling Regrowth at least. Does prevent me from sacrificing treasure tokens, which is relevant.
Attack for 12. And our opponent throws Yasharn under the bus, so they might have another one. Or they just care about the innkeeper more. Aha, uh -huh, Toski. So they get to draw a card right away. Toski can block one of the Hellhounds. Minion a little bit late here. So, sure. Play Nobone. Get to make two treasure. And play minion, which can benefit from a kicked surge next turn. Which we can cast if there's no Yasharn. Moondancer, gonna pick up a plus one counter right away. And a Lotus Cobra. Okay. Our opponent still seems in trouble here. Tulski forced to attack. So they only have three blockers. Knobbone by itself is going to deal nine damage here with a kicked Vasud Surge. So I think that means that Minion of the Mighty is actually going to be useful. The 2-3 Menace cannot be double blocked. So they're going to take at least 11. And our opponent explodes onto the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand has potential. We're just missing a big dragon to cheat into play. But we could technically cheat it into play on turn three if our creatures go untouched. Opponent red whites. It's gonna frostbite our hellhounds. All right, now the lair of the hydra is a little awkward since I can double one drop and then regrowth on three, but I guess since we have to draw a dragon anyway, I might as well play Hellhound minion, hope for a dragon, this is gonna be green, have a six powered Hellhound, and then cheat whatever dragon we top decked into play, that's the plan. Crafty companion, that's fine, there's our dragon. Green. Regrowth. Get one of each. And attack. Well, this is turn three. Through a removal spell. So that's pretty impressive. Opponent falls to eight. And we'll see if they can answer the Inferno. They cannot... Well, you have to put up with a lot of frustrating games when playing this deck. Games where you have the minion, everything is in place and the opponent removes it before you can combo off. Or games where you don't draw the minion, or maybe you have the minion and the landfall creatures, but no dragon to put in play. So a lot of things need to line up properly, and once they do, this is the reward. You get to have a nice turn 3 in front of the star mounts and the opponent explodes. So was it all worth it? Maybe not, but hopefully you enjoyed nonetheless. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.